Let's look at the name resolution process. On the bottom left we have our client. It's configured to point to a DNS server, just like we talked about in the last module. In this case, it's configured to point to this name server over here on the right, ns1.isp.com. And so when the client tries to look up the IP address for a name, it's going to ask ns1.isp.com to resolve that name for it. So if on the client machine, the user were to browse to www.s7s.info, the client machine would ask its name server, do you know the address for www.s7s.info? Now, the name server at my ISP is not going to know the answer for that. So the first thing it's going to do is go to the root name servers and ask, do you know where www.s7s.info is? Now, the root name servers only contain the name server locations for the top level domains. So it knows where the name servers are for .com, for .net, for .us, for .uk, for .info, etc. But that's the only things it knows. It doesn't know specific information about anything inside of those top level domains. So the root name servers know where the .info name servers are. So then the .info name servers are asked, do you know where www.s7s.info is? The .info name servers, they know where the name servers are for all of the domains underneath the .info namespace. So for example, they know where s7s.info is. If we were talking, talking about the .com name servers, they would know where the name servers for google.com or yahoo.com or microsoft.com were, but they wouldn't know anything about those specific domains other than where the name servers are. So then the s7s.info name servers are asked, do you know where www.s7s.info is? Now the s7s.info name servers, they do know everything there is to know about the s7s.info namespace. Since they know the answer to this question, they respond to the original name server with the IP address of www.s7s.info and that info is, information is passed back to the client. Now I cheated when I drew this slide. I make it look like the original name server, ns1.isp.com, reaches out to the root name server, and the root name server reaches out to the .info name server, and so on. In reality what happens is name server 1 goes out to the root name server and it responds. And then my original DNS server here goes to the .info name server and it responds. And then the original DNS server reaches out to the s7s.info name server and it responds. That original name server is responsible for the entire communication path. If the root name servers or the name servers for the top level domain names had to pass along all this information and then route it back, it would be a tremendous load on the system. The thing to remember about how name resolution works is that every step along the way has a certain piece of the puzzle and it gets, you have to get closer and closer to the final answer before you get the actual question you were originally asking.